Who wants some more fall DIYs, including a really unique fall wreath? Stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney. Today I've got another round of budget-friendly fall DIYs for you. If you are new to my channel, I hope you will consider sticking around. I love to do all things DIY and home decor on a budget. Now without further ado, let's get crafting. You will need to grab yourself a wreath or wreath form from Dollar Tree for this DIY. This is a straw wreath that was in the Dollar Tree Plus section that was $3. It's a large wreath, 16 inches, but you can grab one of the wire wreath forms or one of the green foam wreath forms just as easily. Once I got the wrapper off of this wreath, I needed to grab some type of stabilizing wood piece. You need it to be round. So I'm using a wood dowel that I had picked up from Hobby Lobby quite a while ago, but you could use the handle of one of the plungers from Dollar Tree just as easily. The wood piece that we cut is going to be wrapped with some nautical rope from Dollar Tree. Now, at first I was trying to figure out how thick I needed to, I guess, make the rope around this piece of wood. You do want that piece of wood completely covered. So what I decided was four pieces of rope would work great to get this covered. And I wrapped it around, securing it with hot glue, leaving a um, some of the, the pieces of nautical rope dangling off of the bottom as well as on the top. Now, if you haven't figured it out, I am making a tree trunk and after the initial wrapping of the nautical rope, I decided it needed to be a little bit thicker. So I grabbed three more pieces of nautical rope and began to wrap it up. Um, not all the way to the top though, about kind of in between the halfway point and the top of this trunk. You do want to make sure again to leave some tails of the rope on the bottom and the top. Make them about five or six inches long because on the bottom of this those little rope tails will turn into roots and then on the upper portion of this those little root tails, root tails, they're not root tails, <laughs> they're uh, rope tails will turn into branches. So stick with me here and it'll all make sense. Now we're ready to start securing our trunk to the wreath. So you're gonna start by that initial wrapping that we did where I said leave a little bit of tails. You wanna secure those down to your wreath with some hot glue. Once that is done, those pieces of nautical rope, you want to unbraid them, I guess, and it breaks into three segments and those become your roots. So you could spread them out as much as you want, but you do want to kind of lay them out on the wreath, hot glue, tacking it down. So I'll kind of let you watch the process for that. With the roots all done on the bottom of the tree, now we're ready to make the branches. So you're using the same process. You're gonna take those pieces of nautical rope and unravel them. And this is kind of up to you, the look you wanna go. You can unravel it all the way to the trunk. You can maybe unravel it halfway and make it look like the branch is splitting. You wanna pull those kind of tight and hot glue it to the wreath and then go ahead and wrap that all the way around. You're going to be covering those up with leaves so you won't see the piece of nautical rope wrapping to the back but that will just kind of help secure it. So I'll let you watch a little bit of this part of the process. Once you've got the branches where you want them to go, now it's time to attach the leaves. Dollar Tree has this great multicolor pack of leaves and I'm just gonna start by attaching these leaves with some hot glue and getting the tree all covered up. Final steps to finish this wreath off. I grabbed some of the Dollar Tree moss and hot glued that in between the pieces of root of the tree, also kind of on the top of the roots of the tree. And then I also wanted to hot glue a couple of leaves there down at the base of the tree to make it look like some of the leaves have fallen off the tree. And then I left mine at this phase, but you certainly could attach a small little sign to the center trunk of the tree if you'd like to, or a welcome sign, totally up to you. But now this fall wreath is ready to be hung up. Mm -hmm. 
This DIY ends up having a happy little accident, as Bob Ross would say. I started with one of these chalkboard signs that is in the teaching section of Dollar Tree, and I'm leaving it as is. Now, there's a couple options here. You could go in and paint it. You could add some scrapbook paper for the background up to you, but I just wanted to leave it with the black background and the natural wood frame. Now, I did end up using my Cricut to cut out a decal. I will have that file linked down below for those of you who do have a Cricut. If you do not, you can certainly use Dollar Tree stickers or even a paint pen. Same thing, you can get the same look. Once I figured out the measurements that I needed, I applied my decal and this is where the happy accident started. So for whatever reason, when I went to pull off the transfer tape from my decal, it started pulling off some of the black uh, chalkboard background. And so I decided, you know what? I kind of like it. It made it have this distressed look. So I actually takes, took some more of that transfer tape and just went and patted along the sign to pull off more of the black background. The final touch for this was to add some wooden leaves. Couple of options here. Now I had this um, bag of random wooden cutouts. These colored wooden leaves are from Hobby Lobby. They do have them in a pack. Those were the ones that I knew I wanted to use, but Dollar Tree also has the wooden leaf stickers that you can grab in their fall section. So up to you if you wanna kinda keep that whole natural vibe or even just paint your own leaves using the Dollar Tree wooden leaves. I grabbed out several of the colored ones and to get those attached, I just used my hot glue gun and that was the final step to complete this sign. Time to whip up another easy sign. For this one, I grabbed one of these wooden pumpkin planks from Dollar Tree. You could grab a natural one and do a different color scheme than what I'm doing. But for this one, I'm kind of sticking with the whole buffalo check burlap farmhouse type vibe. But again, you could easily change the colors if you want. So I decided the sign was too long and I needed to trim the end of the sign off. I just used my hobby knife to get that accomplished. And then I took a piece of burlap and frayed the edges of it and then hot glued it to the sign. Next, I took some buffalo check ribbon and hot glued that to the center of the burlap ribbon, just securing it on the back. And then I had the metal thankful from Dollar Tree. I kind of placed that down to see how it was pulling together and I decided it needed another bow. So I grabbed a different burlap ribbon with lace trim and just constructed a bow so that it would be, I guess, a perfect looking bow. Now here's where you could take the sign and totally turn it Halloween if you wanted to and use one of the Halloween words and then maybe do an orange bow. So up to you, but again, I'm just kind of keeping this more fall themed. And once the bow was made, I just got it all hot glued down to my sign. With the bow all secure, I hot glued down the word thankful to my sign. Then I did a little bit of cleanup here. I just took a black Sharpie. There were a couple little places where I had cut the board that I needed to touch up. So I just used a Sharpie. You can definitely use paint if you want to. And then I also kind of trimmed it up a little bit with my hobby knife. The last step was just to pick a pumpkin to add to the center of my bow. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a pop of orange, but I ended up going with one of the whitish colored <laughs> styrofoam pumpkins from Dollar Tree. You could add a hanger to this if you'd like or even stick it in the center of a wreath that would look really nice as well but I'm just using mine as kind of a prop sign for my fall decor. Thank you. 
Now this next DIY is something I'm recreating from a project when my son was four years old, beaded corn. So for this, you need to grab out four pipe cleaners. You could do five if you wanted to for each piece of corn and some beads. These gold beads came from Dollar Tree. I thought the gold would be a great color. As far as how many beads to put on the pipe cleaner, I went with 30 that worked out great for the size, but you could make this any size that you want to. Once your pipe cleaners had beads, you can see that I folded them in half. So it's kind of 15 beads on one side, 15 on the other, and left a little bit of the pipe cleaner at the base. And you want to kind of just lock these pipe cleaners together. It took me kind of, again, a minute to figure out. I probably could have searched around for a tutorial on this, but I'm one of those people that I just kind of, you know, like to learn things as I go. So I got them all linked together and then it was just a matter of pulling them up to the top, kind of adjusting the beads. And then I twisted the pipe cleaner and wrapped one of them around to secure the top of my corn bunch of beads or whatever you want to call it. Now here's one of those you make your design choice here. Now you certainly could leave these gold and have fancy corn if you wanted to. I decided to use the color maize, how convenient, um, to paint these. And I honestly, I wasn't really trying to go full coverage. I kind of liked the little bit of gold popping through here and there. So I painted these until I liked how it looked. And then I needed to finish off the top with some corn stalk, I guess you could call it. So to do that, I just took raffia and I hot glued it around the top of the corn bunch. A couple other ideas for this corn. You certainly could do other colors here. You could probably feed your napkin through it and use it as a napkin ring. Also add a tag to it and set it down as a place marker for someone to sit at your Thanksgiving table. So lots of options for these little corn bunches. have to drop a quick Halloween DIY in here again using torch paste because I am obsessed with this stuff. So this wooden cal cauldron came from Michael's. It was like $3. The torch paste uh, was from Amazon. Everything in today's video will be linked down below. So if you didn't see my last torch paste video, this stuff is amazing. So much better than scorch markers. It's just it's just everything. I absolutely love it. I cut out a decal on my Cricut using the Cricut stencil vinyl. I will have that file linked down below and I applied it to my wooden cauldron. From there, you take the torch paste and you apply it just kind of like if you're familiar with chocolate tour, you just want to spread it out so you get a nice thin layer and let it sit for three minutes. From there, you pull off your stencil and then it's time to add the heat. You want to make sure you add a heat gun that has enough power because this essentially will turn it completely black. Now tricks on this, make sure because you are using a higher heat on this, you don't want to hold your heat gun in one spot. So you definitely want to keep moving it around continuously to get a nice burn on your wood. I wanted to add something a little extra to this DIY. So I had this pack of these glitter styrofoam balls. And if you actually think about it, this package is a nightmare. A, it's glitter and B, I don't know if y'all remember the debacle I had with the little tiny white styrofoam balls. If you remember that video, but let's just say they're not a favorite of mine. So I picked out the orange ones and set those aside. And then I just took my hot glue gun and as best I could glued those to the top of the cauldron. And then this was ready to be displayed with all my Halloween decor.
Now this DIY actually serves kind of a multi-seasonal dual purpose. It didn't actually make it into my fall compilation this year, but it is one of my more, I guess, unique projects that I've made for seasonal decor. We're gonna start by making a window. So you wanna grab whatever size frame you would like to use. I am using a four by six. Take all of the glass, the mats, take everything out and then paint your frames whatever color you'd like. I'm going to paint mine white and then you want to hot glue the four frames together. Once those are glued, flip it over and give it a little bit of extra security by hot gluing down some popsicle sticks. I wanted my window to give off kind of an old feel vibe. So I took some of the Dollar Tree spackle and went in and spread that it's particularly in the cracks, the point where the two frames or I guess four frames meet and then kind of spread it around all over the frames. Now you want to grab some of the wooden cutouts and again this is a multi-seasonal piece so I did grab some fall wood cutouts along with some Halloween ones. You could keep this project all fall themed, you could even do it all Halloween theme. You could save this and do it for a Christmas theme into winter, like lots of options here. I picked my pieces, filled in the holes with some spackle and then I went in and painted those. Then I selected my scrapbook paper which all came from Hobby Lobby. I trimmed it out and I glued those to the backs of the frames. To pull this project together, I did go in with a little bit more white paint and paint over that spackle. Then I went in with some brown wax and kind of gave it a whole distressed vibe. Now your wood pieces, you're going to actually be hot gluing those directly to the backs of the frame, the ones that you attached the uh, scrapbook paper to. But this is how you're going to pull it together. You want to put your piece of glass inside the frame, then take some foam and line that kind of along the edges of the frame and then put your back in because you've glued those wood pieces and you want to have a little bit of depth like it's a window essentially so definitely make sure you go glass foam pieces then put your backing in to get the look that you want from there you can add whatever words you want you can use a decal perhaps that you cut on Cricut you could add stickers you could do transfers from Dollar Tree tons of options and again you can make this any theme you want And this wraps up another round of fall DIYs. Let me know down below which one of these projects was your favorite. Also, let me know this. The topic of s'mores. Number one, do you like s'mores? And number two, what is your perfect custom built s'mores? I have to tell you that we love, instead of using Hershey's chocolate, to use Reese's peanut butter cups in our s'mores. I'd love to know your thoughts on any creative s'mores that you have made. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Here are some more videos that you guys might enjoy, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.